All right, time for another math easy solution. We're going to discuss a brief introduction and a brief history lesson on BMI or the body mass index. Just go over what it is. Uh, but before we get to that, I just want to point out that our latest calculator website, BMI Calculator dot CC, is uh, up and running. So make sure to go there and and you could uh, quickly check out your BMI calculated quickly and easily and see whether you're overweight, underweight, or normal weight, etc. Basically, BMI, it's short for body mass index. It's also called the quetelet index. This is basically uh, what it was originally called, and it was named after the basically the founder, Adolf Quetelet. Uh, basically, it's a measure of relative mass uh, based on an individual's mass and height. And the units are kilograms over uh, meters squared. I'll go over it in a, more of that in a bit. Basically, BMI, the formula is defined as the individual's body mass divided by the square of the height in units of you know, kilograms over um, meters squared. So basically, mass divided by height squared. And in the imperial, imperial conversion, if you want to use uh, pounds and in inches, you could just convert this uh, basically one kilogram times this by the uh, conversion ratio of one, one kilogram is equal to 2.204 etc pounds and then divide it by uh, height here but then multiply the height by one meter is equal to 39.37 inches and then square all that plug this plug this into the calculator you get a ratio of the 703 so basically you could use the imperial uh, pounds and inches and just multiply by 703 to get two kilograms per meter square so th this uh, these units just cancel off this bottom one here we're using this conversion ratio so basically uh, the BMI classification this is the international standard uh, except it would be slightly modified for any specific country but it's uh, basically it's all very really similar to this uh, basically underweight is considered as a less than 18.5 uh, BMI of that normal range between 18.5 and 24.99 or or just between 25 and 18.5 overweight it's above 25 up to 30 and then obese is just pretty much uh, just a higher level of overweight that's above 30 and then you could even uh, graph this out in this chart I'll show you an excel file soon uh, that has this chart here and you can download that in a bit basically this is just the weight in pounds and then versus a height it has in it both imperial and also the metric uh, units on these on these graphs right here and and basically this is the red is is the BMI of greater than 30 and in between here uh, this one is overweight normal range and underweight and these lines are just the contour lines so this yeah for example this line has the exact same BMI at any height so someone that's um, let's say five seven if he's if he has the same BMI someone six three if you're if you start here and then you basically just follow this line and you can see the height and, and weight of uh, that they should be both if they're both the same fitness level etc and uh, basically yeah so then this one here this is about 25 so this whole line is all 25 that's what a contour line is so now let's go over some history and usage uh, basically it was devi devised uh, between 1830 and 1850 by the Belgian polymath which just means an expert in many fields Adolf Quetelet, yeah, he's a pretty uh, smart guy. During the course of social physics, he was, he's uh, yeah, pretty much the founder of this field, and it's uh, usually finding uh, standards for a lot of social stuff, like arm strength, uh, fitness levels, in, in terms of just uh, what is a normal person. That's where he was going to going at with this uh, BMI. Basically, Quetelet did not have obesity in mind when he devised his Quetelet index. Like I said, he just wanted to obtain a relationship to describe the standard pr uh, proportions of the human build. Um, okay, just correct that. I have the human build uh, with a D, not a T. In terms of the ratio of height to height, yeah, weight to height in the average adult. So you just wanted to see what is uh, the proportion of a human being in, in their mass or, or weight in their height. And he found that the weight varied not in direct proportion with height, but more closely to the square of the height. For example, yeah, so this is the example I wanna go quickly go over. Basically, I weigh, uh, this example on me, basically I weigh 150 pounds and I have a height of five foot seven inches. If I was to grow 10% taller, roughly, what should my height be if you're using, let's say, direct proportion of mass and height, or using the BMI relationship, uh, basically the square of the height, 
between mass uh, and height and then also which method seems to be more accurate so if we did uh, number one right here so here's me right here I weigh basically uh, 150 pounds and uh, my height is uh, 5 7 and now uh, yeah basically um, with yeah, with changing these to the metric system, just because it's easier to calculate, uh, because BMI is in metric units. So 150 pounds, this is just, if you just convert this, this will be um, uh, 68 kilograms. So that's 68 kilograms and 5 foot 7 inches. This is about 1.7 meters right here. So if we were to increase by 10% height, so basically uh, 1.7 meters times it by... 10% this is just simply equal to well 1.7 this is 10% yeah, of this one times it by 10 over 100 the, you could just cancel these out this is the same thing as dividing by 10 just plug this into the calculator you'll just get 0.17 meters so then the new height would be increased to so yeah this is an increase of 0.17 um, so you increase to basically 60 yeah so you're the 1.7 at 0.17 so you get 1.87 that's just 1.7 plus 0.17 so this is my new height if, if this was my new height uh basically if we were to use the direct proportion so what this means is we would write let's say my initial so basically the proportion has to be the same of height and and mass so it would be 150 pounds at um if you change 150, you go to uh, instead of just write 68. Just use I'll just use a uh, metric system for now. So 168, no, 68 pounds is uh, 1.7, and then divided by 1.7 meters is using direct proportion. If the proportion stays the same, then this would be basically 68. So we have to find the mass, and again that's that's just going to be 10% uh, higher. So then here's this 1.8 eight seven meters so you could just either go ten percent of sixty eight and then add it up or you could just uh, solve it this way so we get m is equal to sixty eight times the yeah, divided by one point seven just solving it times one point eight seven solving this will get equals to yeah this equals basically seventy four if you plug in the calculator point eight uh, kilograms so that is a, just a ten percent increase you could even check 68 uh, kg times it by 10 percent again this just equals two yeah times 10 divided by a hundred right here and then basically this is just same thing as dividing by 10 so that is point, uh, 6.8 and then if you add 68 plus 6.8 or yeah right here this is just 10 percent and again the same thing as doing the whatever I, I did over there so you get 74.8 kilograms right here so now but if we use number two i'll, I'll, I'll compare them soon and then and switch them to uh, imperial units to if you use those a lot to see the to see how uh, the bmi relation will be better so if we use number two method yeah so just write it down right here so we use the bmi method and and again bmi and is going to be equal to if it's if if i stay the same proportion i just increase in height so again we'll, if you use this instead of direct proportion I am uh, 68 kilograms, and then we again we divide it by now 1.7. This is meters, but now we square it. So now we're saying the square of the height is roughly, uh, basically, yeah, roughly in proportion as opposed to just the uh, height by itself. And then again we go to mass, then divided by now this is the uh, increase in height to 1.87. That's 10% increase meters. And now we square. So now we solve for my my new mass would be mass equals to 68 and then divided by 1.7 times it by 1.87 and basically the units are just going to be kg uh, kilograms because these ones will cancel out. So we'll be left with, I mean yeah there's a square if I to square, square these. So there's a square and a square and then we calculate this out and put in the calculator we get so yeah plug this in we get basically 82.28 uh, kilograms right here so now when we uh, check the last part of the question which is to compare and basically say which one is more accurate so let's let's write down what we know yeah so uh, what we know basically initially i am uh, basically five foot seven inches right here yeah and i weigh 150 pounds this is before the 10 percent increase 
and this one in metric units would be basically 1.7 meters and then this one would be uh, 100 uh, yeah this one would just be 68 kilograms so then uh, uh, then then uh, with 10% increase this is using direct proportion we would get up to uh, I got up to 1.87 meters in height and this correlates to scroll up 74.8 kilograms now to get an idea, I use uh, well, uh, I'm in Canada, so I use they use a lot of pounds for for mass or weight. So if you convert this one, we'll get yeah, we'll get basically a height of uh, six foot two inches, which is really tall, and then the weight is only 165 pounds. So this is just uh, yeah, this this is way too little. Uh, you could even tell someone that's six foot two inches if they're 165 pounds, they must be really really skinny. Uh, and yeah, because basically, yeah, this is much taller than me. This is about four, it's five, uh, seven inches taller, but only 15 pounds heavier, which is ridiculous. So now, if we use the BMI method, I'll just write BMI right here. So again, we're going from uh, instead of uh, this five foot seven, yeah, we're going from five foot seven inches, uh, same as the above right here, but now we go all the way to, um, yeah, we go again 1.87 meters in height and then we our weight now is 82.28 kilograms 82.28 yeah, kilograms and then so 1.87 it's again six point uh, no, six foot two inches and now if you uh, convert this one yeah this would be uh, about 181 pounds right here so now which one seems more reasonable well, this is only 15 pound increase, and uh, and I have a lot of friends that are this height, and pretty much same build as me. And this is a much more accurate uh, representation of the mass right here. And that's pretty much was what Cotillet found as well, or Adolf Cotillet found. So yeah, I just wanted to go over this example to help better better illustrate why this BMI was uh, derived initially. And now let's continue on with the history and usage. It's continued. Uh, the BMI was not used, or the Quetillet Index, that's what it was referred to for a long time, was not used widely until after World War II when the relationship between weight and cardiovascular disease yeah, became basically a subject of study. Uh, this is a reference from Econ Han or something, uh, 2007. I have the link to the paper in the description below. I mean, just basically in the description below as well, and I'll get to the end of this one as well. And basically, it was known as a Cotillet index until the term body mass index was used by uh, Ansel Keys, a all, or this is plus other writers in the in 1972 paper, um, indices of relative weight and obesity, and and they basically concluded that the BMI was the best proxy for body fat percentage among ratios of weight and height. So it's again better than the uh, the direct proportion and and some other factors like taken averages of population, etc. And the BMI uh, is used widely as a simple method to assess how much individual's uh, body weight departs from what is normal for a person of his or her height. It's really simple, so it's not 100% accurate, but it's just the, the fact that it's simple, it's used a lot, it's really quick, and it's, it's, a, it's a global uh, value. You don't need to look at population uh, too strictly. And, and also there's a, but then there is once again a strong debate on the BMI scale what thresholds should be for overweight and obese classifications and also there's limitations at the BMI and such limitations include scaling up larger in individuals have larger BMIs even if exact same proportions this is because mass is not directly related to height squared it's a bit more complicated than that but the scaling up usually will give higher BMIs. I'll, I'll go over this in later videos. And also high muscle mass individuals give higher uh, BMI values, even if they're fit, because muscle weighs more than fat. So then a, a bit of muscle would, would count as if it's a, a lot of fat, because it just, weighs, it just weighs a lot more. So even if they're fit, it could still say that they're uh, overweight, even if they're not. And also variations with age, gender, and populations. Uh, there's some limitations on those, but in a general international standard, BMI is pretty quick and it, it's really good for a relative comparing it to um, other people really quickly. And also many different ratios have been invented but not have been used as often and they're all, they are a bit more complicated than the BMI. And also BMI is used as a comparison of the general health of populations in different countries. 
you can go to this link um, in here I also put in the link below it's from the uh, World Health Organization website and they have a BMI section on there as well and also references here I, I also included these in the video description below and basically you get it, uh, got it from Wikipedia and also this paper on its uh, biography slash yeah, a biography uh, written by this guy Garabed Ikonahan on Adolf Kotelet and also the indices uh, that he came up with and other ones about obesity. And also it was from the this this yeah, was from this paper you could go to mes.ph slash no slash five forty one oh one and just click there. The links are also in the bottom and and then another one, this one is that other paper um, that they found. Yeah, so this paper is basically uh, where they use the word BMI for for the first time or body mass index before it was also called Cotillard index until 1972 so when they took it in and you can also download the notes here and also in the video link below and also I'll go over uh, some other stuff I have here here I've made a quick uh, basically a quick BMI uh, Excel sheet scroll up here and I have these different colors for different uh, basically, yeah, so in the white here, it looks exactly like the chart I showed. This is underweight, this is normal range yellow, and then here is the overweight, and that's obese. That's a height in meters, weight in kilograms. And then you got weight in pounds here, and then height in uh, feet and inches of imperial and metric together. And you could also check your BMI here, put in whatever your height is. Let's say it's uh, 1.7, which is me, there's 5 foot 7. It all automatically converts. This one's just for. Uh, metric right except it just it tells you what the weight is in pounds but so where you go right here you go 80 you got 27.7 and you can look in this graph where 27.7 is uh, that is basically uh, this is a good um, yeah this is this is overweight this is slightly overweight here yeah so I've, I've included this exact uh, Excel sheet as well so if you want to play around with it check your BMI and check other ranges in the uh, links below and uh, that's going to be at mes.ph slash notes slash 541o and also have uh, the PDF notes or word notes of this uh, these links and also in the video links all below and now just one more thing I just want to quickly just show you the website we got bmicalculator.cc so you could check this out and, it, and it's uh, much quicker uh, than the other one you could put weight in pounds 150 and then let's say you're five foot like me seven inches automatically calculates if and it tells you you have a normal body weight great job and also it, it auto gets you the metric units and then if you change the metric one which is pretty cool you know, let's say 75 it auto changes everything in the uh, basically imperial measurements as well and then it gives you the categories here Here's your overweight, it's red, 25.9 body mass index, and then it tells you to obtain normal body weight, you gotta lose around 2.89 to 21.42. Again, it says normal. Yeah, yeah, so basically normal body weight doesn't necessarily mean uh, the fitter weight, because if you have a lot of muscle, there's a note here, it just means normal what a usual person is It's uh, to get to that range. And basically, you can also comment here. Uh, anyways, it's all for today. Hopefully, you learned from this video. Once again, you can download these notes and uh, all the papers. Everything's going to be in the description below, especially uh, and this link to this website here, which is pretty cool. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.